Hey friends, it's Laura. I just wanted to share this like epiphany with all of you because this morning I was looking at my design boards and I was like, ew, they look really bad. Um, I don't know if you made design boards like I did a way back uh, a few years ago. Uh, Lori Holt came out with design boards that you could purchase and I'm sure they're great, but I thought I can do this. This is not a big deal. And she actually had a tutorial on how to make your own. And I followed that and I did exactly what she said and they turned out okay. And I used a piece of foam core. I used the batting like she suggested. And then I did the fabric edge with the two and a half inch strip. This is after some use and you can't clean batting very well because it gets all poofy, right? And that's gross. So now that I cross stitch, I'm like, hmm, I've been making these little cross stitch clutches and I'm using fleece. And I'm like, well, why don't I just use fleece on my design boards? So that this morning I was like, hey, wait a minute. Why am I burning my fingers with hot glue? I'm pretty sure that I can um, make this with my sewing machine. So that's what I did today. So check this out. I have a nice edge on my design board with some nice fresh fleece and uh, you can use fleece or flannel. Either one will work. I'm trying out fleece this time. Um, I have some flannel and I may actually do a couple boards with flannel as well, but I wanted to use the fleece on this one because you can lint roll this and it'd be great, right? But look at this nice edge. So I sewed this on my machine. Is that not the coolest thing ever? So. Let me show you how to do it. The first thing you're gonna need is to gather your supplies. So obviously you want a sewing machine. Um, I'm using a Juki DX7. Um, I'm using a denim needle in my Juki. So I, it's a Schmetz denim needle and I will put in the exact number of that needle below. So what you're gonna need is sewing machine, a denim needle, um, I'm just using cotton thread, just what I use for my quilt piecing. You're also gonna want a piece of foam board. Um, you can make these any size you want. I make my design boards 14 inch square. And then you're gonna need a piece of fleece or flannel. Um, I'm using white. You can use whatever color you want, obviously. And I have trimmed those down to about a quarter to, um, what would that be, three eighths of an inch smaller than the foam core. And the reason I'm doing that is because it kind of stretches a little bit when you're sewing around and then you can stretch it and make sure it's really tight so it's a really nice finish. And then you're just gonna need a two and a half inch strip. Um, so obviously measure however big the perimeter of your foam board is going to be, your design board's gonna be, um, and then add a couple inches for overlap. I have a 14 inch board, so it's 14 inches on each side. And so I'm getting about, I, I pull out about 58 inches of the two and a half inch strip. So the next step with that two and a half inch strip is to make yourself some single bias, some single fold bias, bias tape. And I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, so we're going to be at the ironing board for a minute, <laughs> making our single fold bias tape. So I have a two and a half inch strip and I already have it started over here. You might be able to see that. See, uh, basically what you're gonna do, make sure you have a hot iron. And I have this nice little spritz bottle that I got from Apple Tree Quilting. They actually gave them away at a quilt guild meeting. I was so super excited to get one for free. So then you're gonna turn in both sides of your two and a half inch strip about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. I am not meeting in the middle like you would um, on, when making your like normal bias tape. You probably could with this two and a half inch strip, but I wanna make sure that I have plenty of room um, to pull that around to the front to get a nice even finish look on my board. And I wanna make sure, um, I, I like the border. I, I think the fabric's really cute and I wanna be able to see that, that um, nice little fabric strip on the front of my board. So that's really all there is to it. Hopefully you were able to see that. I'll hold it up here once it's pressed so you can see what I'm going for. Had a little oopsie. All right, so you're basically looking for something like this. There's the back, or the front actually, and here's the back. See how it doesn't meet in the middle? And this is all we want, just this flat piece like this. 
Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. I have my two and a half inch strip all pressed and you're gonna notice that I'm not perfect on this pressing because, well, I'm not that big of a perfectionist, I guess. Um, it's gonna be good enough, I promise. So basically what we're gonna do is we're going to sew this just like binding on a quilt. Um, well, similar to binding on the quilt. Binding on a quilt if you did single fold. So you're gonna line up let me get this lined up. Okay. You're going to line up that edge with the edge of your foam board. Now this is going to be the back, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around. We're going to miter our corners just like we would winding a quilt. Then we're going to flip it over, lay our fleece on top of the board, pull our binding around and sew it down again. So let's get started. Okay, so a couple things that I want to tell you, um, some adjustments that I've made on my machine, and obviously I don't know all machines, so you're going to have to kind of play with it and figure out what works best for you and your machine. And obviously, try this on a small, um, a small piece of foam board and see what your settings should be, what needle you should use, um, you know, just all that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to lower my presser foot and I, on the, remember when we made this strip, we have this nice little pressed edge. When I open it, I can see that pressed edge and I am going to sew right on that line all the way around my board. And again, we're going to miter the corners. So a couple settings on my machine that I'm doing, um, I do have my stitch length adjusted to 3.0. Uh, I do have my foot, I have a float option on my sewing machine, so I do have that done as well. I also have slowed down my machine because I'm a pedal to the metal girl, so I know if I don't purposefully slow this down with this adjustment, um, I will be sewing too fast. <clears throat> and then I have a new bobbin, and like I said, just cotton thread. So I'm going to start about an inch, inch and a half in from the end of my bias strip and I'm saying bias it was cut with a fabric so it's not on the bias it's not going to stretch okay so starting an inch in make a couple stitches and do your back stitch like you would normal and then I'm just sewing right on or close to that pressed line I'll be quiet here so I can speed it up When I get to the corner, instead of measuring a quarter of an inch, I've decided that my finger is about a quarter of an inch wide. So I just put my finger down here so I know where to stop my needle. Do a back stitch. Cut your threads. Okay, and you're just going to do this like binding a quilt. So I'm just going to take this and make my little 90 degree, 45 degree. Um, fold to make a 90 degree turn and put this back under for the next side. Okay, so now on this last side, what I'm going to do, I have enough binding for um, two boards. So I am going, I cut the binding and then what you're going to do is since when you flip this over, this one's going to be on, this one is going to be on top, the one you put on first. So you want to turn this back on itself. And I could have done that at the beginning and feel free to do that because that would be, um, a time saver. Um, make sure these line up really well. Where you started and where you stopped, make sure these strips line up on this edge. And then we're just going to sew this down. And your cut edge is just going to lay right um, on top of the other piece. Try to match up your stitching too to make it a, a much um, better finished edge. Okay. So that's the first step. Okay, so now that we have the binding attached to the back of the board, look how nice that looks. 
you know, you just pull it and it's really nice and taut all the way around there and it's stitched down. And you can see the stitching on the front of the board, obviously. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to layer our fleece, pull our binding over, sew it down, and we have a beautiful design board. Okay, so I just lay my fleece down. And you could, if you wanted, you could probably glue this in, in place onto the foam board a little bit. Now remember, we did cut it a little smaller than our foam board. So, but that's gonna be, it's gonna be fine because when we work around, it's gonna stretch and that's going to help keep our, our fleece really nice and taut. Now, I don't like starting where my edges meet. Um, some people do, and that would be fine if you wanna do that. I like starting somewhere else. So, in fact, I usually start on the side furthest, you know, that it's gonna be the furthest away to travel to get back to that, just because, um, just in case anything gets a little wonky or anything, I don't have both ends sewn down. So I'm going to put my fleece over to pretty much the edge, and I'm going to pull my binding over just like this, and I'm going to put it underneath my machine. I'm using a clear foot on my Juki, and so what I'm going to do is when I'm sewing it, my needle will be in the center, and I'm going to run my fabric edge right on this um inside edge of the toe. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now you could, if you wanted to use binding clips, um, you could use those and clip it down around. I feel like on a project this size, they're not really that necessary. And to be quite honest, I rarely use binding clips even on my big quilts. And again, I'm gonna sew for a little bit and then I'm gonna be quiet so you, and we'll speed it up in the video. I'll explain this first corner when we get there. So I'm gonna take a couple stitches and then do the back stitch and then just proceed down this side. I like this nice wide um, fabric border on the sides of my design board. If you don't like that, then you could um, iron your two and a half inch strip with the with the edges meeting in the middle or use a, or use a, um, a thinner strip. Okay, so I'm almost to the corner, and you'll notice that I push that under, just like binding a quilt, nothing different here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew down this corner. Another thing I love about my Juki is that on the um, foot pedal, I have it set on the, so if the back, um, I have like a back button on my foot pedal, so I can lift and lower my foot from down below. Now I do do a couple back stitches in the corner. And now I'm gonna be quiet and speed up the video. Okay, so now I'm on this third side, and remember um, our fleece is cut a little smaller, so I am kind of tugging it over to the edge of that board just to get it a little stretched, a little tight. We're almost to where that fabric overlaps. And you may need to finagle it a little bit just to make it really nice. I mean, you could um, you could also sew your ends together like you do on binding a quilt and then they would be really nice and finished. I just wasn't that concerned. That's it. So now we have a nice design board with this nice sewn edge, the mitered corners, ah! and my fingers are not burnt from glue. That was my hugest issue with the um, gluing the strips on <laughs> with the fleece and the or the batting and the strips it was burning my fingers. So now I think this looks great. What do you think? All right, so that's it. Um, if you guys like the tutorial, please like the video. Um, subscribe to my channel. I do a floss tube every two weeks. My next one is April 25th. It's a Tuesday. I usually upload around 8 
eight o'clock or so at night. Um, I'm a Central Standard Time in Columbia, Missouri. And actually, the next video on April 25th, 2023, I'm going to be um, giving away some scissor fobs. So make sure you watch that video, watch for the question, and make a comment because then on the next floss tube, which will be May 9th, um, I will announce the winners in the video. So I hope to see you there. I have, I'm hoping that you liked this little tutorial. I know I'm excited about the design boards and not having um, burnt fingers. So that's amazing. And I will see you next time. Happy stitching.